your tracks out on the corner um, to, to, to get people into Salvation. Oh, there was something I was going to read to you, and I think this would be a good capper. This podcast is going to be, um, you know, epic like, like they all are, but let's see if I can find this important. I told her I'd read this. Okay. Uh, we've been discussing prophecy in the end times of how everyone's trying to time the end and time the rapture, and they're saying all these terrible things are going to happen to mankind. And I'm like, they're happening, brother, man, hey. And they've been happening. You know, worse doesn't even matter anymore. If you wouldn't, once you're bludgeoned, who cares? Oh, that's okay. Um, so I told her I was going to read what she wrote because she wrote a really good thing. And, and she goes, wow. Well, if it makes sense, go for it. If stones are start getting thrown, you can take the blame. Lol. Or as Jesus said, if you become my disciple, these stones will serve you. Um, I, I'm not worried about that. I've had, you know, all my life I've had stones thrown at me. That's nothing new. Um, so we're going with it. Okay, we're going to get into her. This th th She put it in a way that, you know, I think is pretty eloquent. And this is just a sister in Christ. But we're in this inner church. We're not in the outer church. The end. Okay, so the talking about the end times and we just looked at this whole thing about the end times. someone had a dream and they laying it all out it's going to be this it's going to be that it's going to be Ebola it's going to be this it's going to be that it's going to be World War III and, and then after World War III it's going to be chaos and economic poverty and people would be murdering and stealing from each other and then this is going to happen then, and then eventually then Jesus when he returns he comes for his bride and he takes the bride out and then he's going to judge the world and he's going to really open, then he's really going to burn him to death and then and then, you know, most of the people are killed on the earth, but still there's a big fireball that could, you know, whatever. So there's that, okay? And I admit that it was a kind of, um, it seemed like a little too late, a little too late to be, but they, they roll that stuff out, these, the, 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 especially the, the rapture um, thing. Anyway, so her take on it is the end, when it keeps saying the end, when the end is near, the end will come when? I'm waiting for you. When? 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 Oh, just a little ways longer. The end is a person. And the event is the marriage. The gospel is the gospel of the kingdom within, or the kingdom, period, which happens to be within. Once again, I, I mean, three sentences sums it up. The end is a person and the event is the marriage. The gospel is the gospel of the kingdom within. Matthew 24, 14, Luke 17, 20 and 21, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, as far as scriptural uh, evidence. Okay, so... And then, of course, we're quoting here, she quotes from the book Gospel of Thomas, which is not really in the Bible, but it doesn't really matter because it's uh, considered to be legit. So let's, let's go through. Okay. The disciples said to Jesus, uh, tell us, how will our end come? And Jesus said, have you found the, the beginning then that you are looking for the end? You see, the end will be where the beginning is. Quite perfectly said. Congratulations to the one who stands at the beginning. That one will know the end and not taste death. Jesus said, Congratulations to the one who came into being before coming into being. If you become my disciples and pay attention to my sayings, these stones will serve you. For there are five trees in paradise for you. They do not change. Summer or winter and their leaves do not fall. Whoever knows them will not taste death. Okay, then it says, Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, and the apocalypse is the revealing or uncovering of Jesus Christ. Once again, Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, and the apocalypse is the revealing, and that's what it means, it means to reveal the, the revelation. The apocalypse is the revealing or uncovering of Jesus Christ. 
and that's Revelation 1.1 1, 1, and 19.10, Romans 8, uh, 18 through 30. If we continue to look for the end times as an external event or events in history, linear time, we will never escape the matrix. Our escape is in a person, not a future event. The gospel of the kingdom is all about the marriage uh, for the son, capital S. In the book of Revelation, the end is found at the beginning, but without the curse or tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that's Revelation 22 as a reference. Jesus, the I am, says he comes quickly, the, exter- the eternal present. Okay, I, I come quickly. That, that is, he comes in the present moment. The eternal present, he's all, he comes quickly. Okay, here he is. I come quickly, the eternal present, to reward each individual person according to his work. Jesus is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Okay, he just said that. If you're standing at the beginning, you're standing at the end. In him, we have the beginning and the end. And if you stand at the beginning and and have the end, i.e. Alpha and Omega, meaning Jesus, then you will not taste death. Amen. If you exist in the present moment, you cannot taste death. Amen. Our fall began when we separated from Jesus Christ, became a divided kingdom, and ate from another tree. So our ending will be, will, will be when we are married back to Jesus Christ, our kingdom, Matthew 22, 1 through 14. The outer darkness of Matthew 22, 13 and 14 is what John is describing in Revelation 22, 15. It is not being able to consummate the wedding and eat again from the tree of life within, Jesus, which is Jesus Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory, so that you we will not taste death, the second death. John wrote the book of Revelation from a perspective of the time always being at hand. I know, total heretic. Um, I can't, I'm not going to say right now who it is. I, 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 I'm, I'm sworn to anonymity. They, they, they're concerned with this kind of, I mean, this is hot stuff, right? I mean, we, this is the kind of stuff that in the past you, 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 you burned at the stake. <laughs> Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and also they which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Clouds in scripture are symbolic of the presence of the Shekinah glory of God. Jesus Christ. And every eye shall see him could also mean perceiving or seeing with the mind of the spirit, not necessarily with physical eyes, period. Now, I read that because that's pretty much my, uh, I mean, you know, it's nice to know you're not, you know, that's, there's a lot of people that feel this way. This is, a, this is a whole different perspective. This is looking at it from within, at the whole thing from within, not from without. So I know Jesus is real. I also know that, you know, these issues in the Bible of inconsistencies with, you know, what God did here that he didn't do there and different things. And then them telling, the the inconsistency is not that those are questions to be asked and issues to grapple with, especially for young people. The issue is, is when it's taught to not question. You're taught to not think. You're taught to not live. The, the person that I am because I think and ponder things is the person God made me to be so that I could be available to be brought back, you know, to the Lamb. If I were different, I'd be closed off to it because I would already know all the answers. And with that, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else, and all you other beings and all the different realms and universes and, and megaverses and whatnot, uh, I think this is probably going to be pretty good. But I have to finish by saying, in the name of Jesus, I pray that our eyes are opened and we see he comes quickly. Amen. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. It just puts a whole different perspective on, on everything, doesn't it? When we look from within rather than without, when we look from the internal to the eternal, 
when we realize that all it's, it's here now, not just around the corner, just a little while longer. We must somehow find a way to be at peace. And I can't be at peace if I'm constantly following. Now, when, yeah, yes, years ago, I'd follow all the external events like everybody else. And then eventually, I, I just, it started, my understanding started deepening and changing through time. Even, you know, the, the seeds of it were there in 2004, 2005 about forgiveness about soul tracks, about translation, about all kinds of things that we just don't get to deal with too often. And yes, this trumps the news. Sorry, but okay, the news out there, um, it's bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the bad guys. Do, you know, the canines are at it again. They're slaying Abel all over the world. And, um, you know, they're, they're killing the truth and they're killing integrity and they're killing what, what, anything that's godly they want to mess up. They're overwhelming the system. They're stealing your money. They're taking everything that uh, isn't tied down. And um, then they're sitting there on top of it and wanting you to worship them and kiss their feet for doing so. Um, which, of course, you, you, you know, the public does with great, with great um, respect and, and uh, you know, may I say the word al alacrity? Um, uh, I'm going to give you the definition of that. What a great word. Alacrity. Alacrity. Brisk and cheerful readiness. <laughs> Wasn't that the perfect word? <laughs> with great alacrity, I said. Not great, but I mean with alacrity. In other words, with a great and cheerful readiness, they kissed the, the boots of their enslavers. Yes, alacrity was the perfect word. Now, there's a word that needs to be used more often, folks. You use that word, alacrity. That's something like Bill O'Reilly would ask at the end of his show, right? Isn't alacrity a kind of word that would be on the Bill O'Reilly show, Trish? I mean, on the Bill O'Reilly show, does he still have words at the end? The word, the word. I don't know. Does he have the word of the day? Yeah, I think so. Well, wouldn't the word alacrity be a great word yeah. for, for him? That's the thing I liked about Bill O'Reilly. That's the old teacher side of him. I like that. I like teachers. Like I said, I was in that little GED class. And the teacher asked me, you know, asked the class, you know, what do you hope to get out of this? And we were reading books too in there. You know, it was kind of like a little high school. It was kind of a quasi high school slash you got your GED, but you also got a high school diploma too. It was like an alternative high school. So we were reading books and doing reports and things. And, I, and, I, and it, she asked, it got to me, it was like, I want to learn how to think. I didn't know what it meant at the time. But then she repeated that when we got our diplomas, you know, when we had a little graduation. And she repeated, um, when she was summing up the class, she repeated when I told her I wanted to learn how to think. And I guess, you know, it's like, I didn't even realize how powerful that statement was because I actually, over time, learned how to think. Maybe not back then. It was really hard for me to concentrate on reading a book or any of that. But in time, I actually became a kind of a, a, a pro prophetic fulfillment for me. I may not be the greatest thinker, but I do spend my time thinking about things and wondering about things. And I guess that wonderment, I, I, I seem to be getting even more so now to where I feel like I'm almost regaining my childhood. Like when I was a child, I used to wonder about the stars in outer space. I just wondered and wondered and wondered about the moon and the stars. And I was just, that was like my favorite, favorite of all time things. You know, I, I, I wonder why I didn't go into astronomy. I guess because I would have had to have lied and said there is no such thing as you know, aliens or Planet X or whatever. You know what I mean? It would have been hard for me to work at NASA. <laughs> but shoot, man. I mean, I can't think of anything more pleasant 
then being able to, uh, I, I don't know if Planet X exists. I, I have no idea. That's just like that's out in the popular. To me, it's like everything is a myth and all the information they say is true is a myth. This whole life is a myth, a vapor. This whole thing is, a, is not really completely real. It's like a process we're going through and we have to do it cheerfully because the Lord is bringing us through and, and we're learning things. And maybe the soul does learn. I want to also say that I could have made a mistake when I said my soul seems to be... Um, me and it doesn't change and it doesn't learn anything maybe it does learn stuff and maybe that's why we're here for our soul to learn something but i i do believe it's not intertwined with the flesh and the fall of man that once it liberated it, it a lot of the things that occur to us and desires that we would have the soul doesn't really have but maybe the soul desires to be here in some way maybe there's something it gets out of it maybe it's not called learning but i'm 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 that, you know, I'm just giving you my thoughts on the matter. and This is not coming from on high. I, I don't know the, the real answer. I'm just, it seems to be that me is me. And it's my soul. I know, it, I know it's here with me. I'm the same as I was when I was three. It's the same soul, same soul, same thing. It doesn't seem to have changed. So that's my observation right now. I don't have a hypothesis about it. I don't, a lot of things I do, I say, have an opinion and hypothesis and things like that. Um, in questioning the Bible, I'm not from on high saying this should be ripped down and thrown out. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that if I don't question something that needs to be questioned, then I could become split and more susceptible to being scalped. Oh, so what's scalped? If they take the soul out of you and put something else in you that makes you obey them, kind of like invasion of the Bible. You know, people know about all this. And they do sci-fi movies to show you they know. But it's a terrible thing you know, being a farm animal, you know, being harvested for souls, not being told that's what's going on. If that's true, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of maybe 75% convinced that's what it is, or at least I've seen enough to get me to the 75 percentage mark, that that's basically what it is. And that's a horrible thing that, that it's really like being a farm animal. And so, and then when we vote and have things like we think we have choices, we're overridden and some awful war starts, even though we all protest and say no, or they have a banking crisis and they steal all the money. And, and, and no matter what we say, um, the people of the border, they just open them up and Homeland Security trains to start shooting the, um, the people who are paying their paychecks. I mean, you can't make this up. This is total horror. Is it any wonder that I would rather look at the root cause of this horror which I believe we've proven today, have we not? Have we looked at the root cause of the horror today? I absolutely think we have. I think we've gotten down to the nub of what causes um, all the violence and all the wars and all the pain and all the suffering. That's what I'm interested in. Why, why I look at the symptoms, i.e. all the pain, all the suffering, all the bad things people do. Why do they do those things? How can we stop them? Are we just helpless and we have to wait till Jesus returns? That's another um, myth. Where did he go? Animal, I'm, I, I think we're just gonna leave it with a question.